Hey guys, it's Kyle down here at LunaCycle. Today I'm going to show you how to bleed the brakes on the Telario Sting MX-5. Uh, this system uses dot fluid, which is different than any previous Telaria brake. Um, dot fluid is a little bit special. Uh, you do need a special bleed kit. We'll put a link in the description. We'll also put a link to where you can buy dot three or dot four fluid. Um, you don't want to use mineral oil and you don't want to use a mineral oil bleed kit. Dot fluid is a little bit corrosive. It can ruin paint if it's left to sit on your frame. It's also really not good for your hands and you definitely don't want to get it in your eyes. So you want to wear gloves. You want to have lots of towels around. You want to have some rubbing alcohol or some good soapy water to clean up any spills. And uh, another thing about dot fluid is it does absorb moisture out of the air. So you do need to do a brake bleed once a year, regardless of how often you ride your bike. But it does perform much better than mineral oil, so the higher maintenance uh, comes with better performance. So here we have the bleed kit, which there's a link in the description. It's full of DOT4 fluid. It comes with two syringes. You're going to need a 3 mil to open up the bleed port on the caliper, an 8 mil to attach it, a Phillips to uh, open up the reservoir up at the top. And so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the pads. You don't want to get any of this brake fluid on your brake pads. The MX-5 comes with some really big brake pads. You just remove this little retaining clip. Push this pin out. You're going to have your little spring and your pads come out all at once. Go ahead and put these in a safe spot. You don't want to get any fluid on these. And on the outside, you'll see there's a three mil bleed port. Um, this is a much bigger brake than any of the previous brakes. So there's no way to stick a little yellow bleed block in here. So I do have a little piece of cardboard I'm gonna wedge in here and that's just gonna keep the pistons from falling out. If you're bleeding this and you're squeezing the lever, these pistons may move in a little bit and you just don't want them to fall all the way out. So here I have just a piece of cardboard that's just going to sit in there and protect the little pistons from falling out. Now you want to quickly remove this and then attach the syringe. You are going to lose a little bit of fluid, but if you do this quickly, you won't lose too much. Just go ahead and snug that down with your eight you and wipe off some of this fluid, but we'll do a proper cleaning after we're done with the bleed. Because when we remove this, we're going to lose a tiny bit of fluid also. So now that you've got your syringe attached, it's time to go up to the top and open up the reservoir. All right, the next step is to open up the reservoir up on the top. Um, it uses a Phillips head for the two reservoir bolts. Before you open this up, you do want to level this out to where this reservoir is level. And then be prepared for a tiny bit of fluid to come out. So go ahead and have a little rag ready. And just open up the reservoir. We can now set the cap aside. There is a little rubber piece in between the aluminum. And you can see we have extra fluid up here at the top. Since we're pushing new fluid in, and we're going to try to catch the old fluid as it comes up and out, I'm going to go ahead and remove all of this old fluid that's in here. All right, and then in one motion, I'm going to try to push fluid up and into the reservoir without overflowing it. Uh, when it starts to get to the top, I'm just going to suck out the extra. And this will work out any of the little bubbles that we have in our system. So you can see here, 
slowly, slowly pushing fluid. You can see it coming up into the reservoir. And as we get to the top, I'm just going to take our second syringe and remove it. While you're doing this, it is good to flick this lever a few times. This can free up any bubbles that are stuck right here. You can also flick on the line. This will free up any, any bubbles. And it looks like we've bled this system. All right, so next I'm gonna replace this cap uh, that's going to make it so I lose a lot less fluid when I remove this lower syringe. So let's go ahead and replace this cap. And we'll move it back down to the bottom and replace the syringe with the little bleed port cap. Now we may come back to this and top this off later. Um, but whenever you remove that syringe you do want this system closed so we're going to go ahead and replace this and you may see a little fluid overflow that's exactly what you want you want as little air in there as possible so see the rubber comes down pretty low and takes up a lot of volume in here so even though this didn't look totally full that whole area is full Very low torque spec on these. Just get these snug. You can see oil's coming out all around. We'll go ahead and clean this up properly in a second. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and close off this syringe. We're going to quickly remove the syringe and reinstall the little bleed port cap. You're gonna lose a little fluid but if you do it quickly, you won't lose too much. And just get this one snug. All right, now it's time to properly clean everything. You can use soapy water, but rubbing alcohol seems to work pretty good because it evaporates. You can also use full-blown brake cleaner. So we're just gonna douse this whole thing with rubbing alcohol. Because we don't want any of this fluid to get on our rotor or on our pads. It can be really helpful if you have an air compressor or some compressed air. But you do want to be careful that this, none of this sprays up in your face. All right, once you're sure you've removed any of the brake fluid, you can go ahead and reinstall your pads. Reinstall the little pad pin. You may need to push down on the spring. There you go. And reinstall the little clip. All right, now it's time to reinstall this on the bike. Um, if your pistons have moved, like this one has a little bit, um, you may need to spread these. You can use a flathead screwdriver, just be sure it's clean. Um, and then 
we're going to go ahead and reinstall this. We'll clean the callip or clean the lever up on the top, and then your brake should be bled. And I do want to start by saying there's about four different ways to bleed this brake. Bleeding just means get the air out. So you could just open up the reservoir at the top, uh, add fluid, and just open this up and let it flow. It's called a gravity bleed, and you don't need any kit for that. You would just need dot fluid. Um, you could also just add fluid from the top and pump it. Any way to get the air out will make your brake work fine. All right, go ahead and center the brake pads and tighten down the two caliper bolts. All right, we went ahead and reinstalled the caliper. If you're very careful, you don't need to remove the caliper at all, but you just want to be sure you don't get any of this fluid on your rotor. So once we've reinstalled the caliper, we're going to move up to the top and properly clean this. We just don't want any of this fluid getting anywhere near the paint on the bike. So just clean this really good with some alcohol or soapy water. Now before you go ride your bike, you do want to squeeze this several times and make sure the lever feels nice and stiff. If it feels nice and stiff, start off with a slow ride, and then you should be good to go. So that's how to bleed the brakes on the Talaria Sting MX-5.